Good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Broad Perspective here on The Broad Perspective Network. We're glad you're with us today. We have a very interesting and exciting show. It's kind of a continuation of last week with the Shaw brothers, Jacob and Joseph. And by the way, my name is Vivian Kamori. And I'm Katie Curly Nelson. Yes. And when we left our conversation last week, I think we left a lot of, a lot of ends that we want to talk about a little bit more. One of the things is Jacob was talking about that we have changed. We, there's no one there for the children. There's no one there to teach the children. There's no one there to, to be with the children. And I get that, and I totally agree. I think our whole system of existence has changed so much, starting with, I think, the Industrial Revolution. Mm. And when we took the men out of the farms, and then we put the women in the factories, there was no one there for the children. Well, who was it, William Blake? William Blake that was against the Industrial Revolution? I think so. Mm -hmm. He was an outspoken, outspoken opponent of the Industrial Revolution, as well as the Luddites. And the Luddites were people that were sending or setting the factories on fire. They didn't want to see the mechanization of anything because they knew it was going to destroy the family. That was their take on it. So out of, I think it was 24 Luddite activists in Britain, they hung 17 of them. And the Luddite movement never really took off. However, sometimes I consider myself a Luddite. But however, nowadays I think if the Luddites were... were together and unified like they were back in the 1700s at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, we would pay attention because we're seeing the effects of the Industrial Revolution. We're seeing the effects of the mechanization of society that has taken parents out of the home and away from the children. We're letting everybody else raise our children. We think we have to for that struggle for the legal tender and there's nobody there to mentor them, to teach them. And we buy into it. Oh, I must work and I must provide this income and this living to maintain our lifestyle. And at the expense of what? Nothing. You give them an iPad. They'll grow. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> I want an iPad. No. It's just, I, I know, I mean, this is like, it's a really sad topic, you know, just how you look back to it. And is it being nostalgic or is it really wanting us to have something better? And it just gets to the point, people just don't realize it. Like, what feminism and masculinity really is you know we have these like own personal wars and we develop these topics where there's a really strong character to being a woman and to being a man and that stuff's important to embrace because that's what in in essence creates that full circle that full harmony of the spectrum and because we don't have that because we all want to be equal and we're all the same thing we lose that essence of what we are from nature and everything's off balance, and we just can't grow. So it's just, we're at the, again, this little void that's a shame because we could grow so far because we have so much more. But when we think about when the times were better, when you know we had better parents or whatever you want to call it, we always look back. And you know, part of it is, are we being nostalgic, or is it something that we see in ourselves that we could have been, we were that good? but society changed us, or we could have had better leaders and we could have become better. It's just, you know, what do you want from this topic? Is it, is, is it do you really want to talk about, did the family fall apart? Do we want to talk about, um, you know, that to the whole society and culture and technology created something, but we lost our humanity? Which way do you want to go with it? Well, I think that's exactly where, personally, I would go with it is that we did create something, we created a highly mechanized world, but we've lost ourselves, we've lost our culture, we've lost our identity with our families. The family unit is nothing like what it used to be. It's completely different. Well, tell me then this, how, because you have more tools today to have an easier mm -hmm. lifestyle, how would you want to find yourself in your family? What would you want for you to find it? Be that, what it is, that leader, that example, to be for everybody else. What is that ideal Vivian? Because you know, we're talking about this, so obviously we're not our ideal. We're still thinking that we miss that ideal. Right now, the reason we're even talking about this is because it bothers us. Right. Us specific right. here to this show. Right. And therefore, we're not our ideal. So why are we not our ideal? What's missing to make Vivian that leader that we want so your children and their children and everybody has those leaders? What are we missing? Why are we I, losing ourselves? I think we're missing societal acceptance. I think we're missing that the society doesn't value taking care of our children. They don't. They don't. They don't value 
a relationship where we set our own hours and we go back and work at, at meaningful work, meaningful labor that is something we want to do. So spending time with your children and homeschooling isn't a bad thing? I don't think it's bad at all. I certainly did it. And it's better, isn't it? I, do you think they learn more? I don't know the answer to that. I do, I would say now, yes. I would say maybe three years ago, I was conflicted about that because we homeschooled our youngest. Well, my second son as well for a period of time, but our youngest from about sixth grade on. And the reasons for that were many fold, but I didn't feel like he was really, his time spent in school was well spent when he's coming home with hours and hours of homework. And I'm really accomplishing nothing in the classroom. I'm like, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. this is kind of a waste of time. We can do this at home. But I can tell you now, and seeing my son, and how he's turned out, he's a very bright kid. And I say to him, where did you learn all this stuff? Because I know that I didn't personally teach you all of this. And you, you know, he's learned it from video games. He's learned it from uh, something on TV. He's learned it from an experience of being with his family. He's learned it from us, from things that we've taught him, just in life just in life like he helps me like last night i canned dog food and so he's always my helper you know in, in doing those things see good so vivian you're being a good leader and a good teacher for your family you're yourself which we were speaking about in the last in the last show now tell me this then what pisses you off that our leaders aren't doing to be better examples for everybody else what are they doing our leaders what whether it be presidents whether it be mayors whether it be personalities that are very celebrated in society, what are they not doing that's angering you that this topic is even an issue? Well, I don't think they're paying attention to the real issues. I don't think they're being realists. I don't think they really, really see. I went to a uh, panel discussion about two years ago at the Country Club, and there were seven or eight educators, and their, their issue was obesity in the schools. So. They spent two hours telling us about how they needed to get the kids more active and teach them proper nutrition. And at the end of this meeting, I was livid. I stood up and I said, you know, I feel like the house is on fire and you're spitting on the flames. You told us nothing we didn't know. That's fed to us all the time. Eat less, exercise more. And that's not the problem. Here we, in this community, we have people who commute, and they're gone. They're gone for long days, and there's nobody home with Junior. Right. So when Junior comes home, and there's no meals prepared for him or her, what are they going to do? They're going to reach for the simplest thing, and it may not be nutritional, but there's nobody home to guide Junior. Right. There's nobody there to assist him. <clears throat> and I really felt like, and these were community leaders, and... I'm sorry, I don't mean to, to, to make light of them. They're, they're doing a lot of stuff for the community, and they meant well. But I don't really feel like they tapped any of the real issues because they it was all focused on the same thing. Right. And I see that in our leadership. They focus on the things that are simple, the things that pacify. they... That, that pacify, exactly. And it's not real. It's not really looking at the greater issues. And I see it all the time, time and time and time again. And there's no support for the stay-at-home mother. She's vilified for staying at home with her children. You know? right. and, and because she's lazy, of course. Well, lazy, of course. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she doesn't have the, the income, the bringing two incomes in, because it's more important to have that extra income than it is right. to contribute to your family. So I could get on the cell blocks and talk all day, but I think our leaders really don't have a clear picture of really what's going on and really what it would take. And I think if you ask any of these children... Would they rather have more things, or would they rather have their parents around more? My guess is they'd really like to have parents their parents. Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, you know, I think what you basically just said in a nutshell is our leaders aren't being leaders. They're not no. being opinionated. They don't have opinions. They just want to be popular and therefore go right. with everything. They give you ideas and thoughts, but they implement nothing, and they do not live by example and don't just do it. It's just all about consensus and what do you all think? instead of just doing things and doing things right. Because we're assuming that our leaders actually are there for the better, betterment of <laughs> humanity and people yes. and lifestyle. Which are not. They're, which they're, they're not. They're there to lead the state, which has a, its own agenda, respective of you. And that the is energy, their main right. agenda. Right. And then they just throw little nuggets to pacify yeah, you and not to shut you up so that you'll go back to your home and not really worry about right. it so that they can go ahead and get done what they need to get done, which is controlling everybody and having every so like when they say you when your child was born on your birth certificate it actually says you know that they are now a property of the government yeah 
You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. you have no rights. They don't really care about our children. Mm -hmm. They care about what our children they are going to produce. They need later. the energy. They need the energy. They need the, the energy. Person. And if you look at like video games and everything else that's happening right. with that, and how they are actually really training our kids. Right. They are, but they, they learn, learn a lot. They can learn a they lot. They really from are them. training them. And I and I I used to vilify video games, and now listening to my son and other kids, and I say, where did you learn that historical fact? Oh, I learned it. In, some the old Call of Duty. Yeah, Call of Duty. Assassin's Creed. Yeah, any of those. But they they really do learn hey, some things. Yeah, Zelda and fa Final exactly. Fantasy games. All those learned me how to. All those to learned me. <laughs> I, 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 I I'm not learning. I is. No, no. They taught me really well how to like problem solve. You know, because you always had to. But you know, when we're talking about these leaders, it's a great thing to go back to understanding the past, which brings Joe in greatly. Is the leaders in the past, Joe, were the elders. What was important, like, why were the leaders the elders? What is it about that agent and that experience that makes you a good leader? Well, I think it's like what Vivian started off on about the Industrial uh, Revolution, you know, and this is really where um, a big transformation in society happened from everything being personal and principle-based, meaning that we all try to live up to some virtue or standard because we understood it was not only better for us, but better for society as a whole to move like that as opposed to the bottom line now, which is basically profit, and it's just a cold mechanism of um, making things as efficient and profitable as possible. And, you know, the elders uh, of the time, not even necessarily elders, but whoever were the superiors at that time, really try to promote good behavior. Even though it wasn't perfect, you still have wars like anything else. But that's the problem with today is that the state is the state, and it's basically don't look at the president like anything other than a pimp. It's a manager. That's what mm -hmm. they do. They manage affairs. They manage human affairs for the efficiency and productivity of the state. They don't care about you. They don't care if you die or live or get cancer or anything like that. Just pay your taxes. Um, make sure that you live into the, within the status quo as much as possible. Because if you're not serving the system, then you're against the system. Which, in, in their view, you're a cancer to the system and you need to be eliminated in any way possible. And it's like what you said. What, what happened exactly? You know, it's like... Uh, it was funny because I was watching Joan Rivers. I've never watched a skit from Joan Rivers, you <laughs> okay. know, but it was actually very intelligent because I've known about this, you know. We know about the, the conspiracy of um, women's liberation, you know, right. how it, was, it had nothing to do with women's liberation. No. It's just because Collect you guys, because they money. know you can collect more tax money, and the sole objective was that is to break apart the family by institutionalizing right. the child into the state system a little bit or a lot earlier. And that's exactly what happened. It's funny because Joan Rivers was making a comedy sketch about that. And she's like, we did it to ourselves. You know, she just shaking yes, her head. We, we did. did it to ourselves. And that's always the thing, you know, when it comes to government, because their objective is human affairs and the efficiency of human affairs, always, not 99% of the time, not 99.9% .9 of the time, but 100% of the time, ask what are they going, what is their objective? Because they'll promote one thing. But it's never what they promote because right. business people are not stupid. And if they're going to put money into your operations, it's going to be so they can suck it out tenfold on the back end somewhere. Right. So they don't help you. And that's okay because that's what they do. That's right. what businesses do. They're in it for the profit. But as long as you understand that and the state's not there for you, you'll be okay. Exactly. But right when you start... You know, right when you start looking into any of this type of like corporatization as being beneficial... Is it really beneficial? Because today we have microphones and we say, oh, we can reach out a broader, uh, you know, broader demographic of people. But wait, a hundred years ago, all the village people lived within a mile radius right. of each other. You see, right. so it's a trick. It's not really that things are better today. They're not. You know, even though we have all these technologies and iPhones and cars and we can travel the whole world over in you know 24 hours, mm -hmm. but what's been lost and which is infinitely more valuable is that human to human connection that we don't have and I think that's the primary responsibility for depression for uh, people with illnesses for people you know then women or just like even you know we were talking about a little bit earlier all these um, um, you know sexual diseases of all these erratic fantasies mm -hmm. and stuff like that that doesn't make sense is because you're suppressing a very important human element and then later comes out in a just crazy form you know and so I, I think that's an important thing is always you know, you got to keep your unit closer together, and anytime the government promotes something that looks favorable, just know it's not favorable. There's something that they're doing that, just like women's liberation, that was a, you know, every woman was like, oh, this is a good thing. Now look. Now, you, you, most of the real men are either in debt or jail, or they left the country because right. they're intelligent. Most of the women are going to be single, unfortunately, or you can settle for some guy that's not really a man. 
You know, I mean, you're, you know, I mean, you, you know, it's like the dating scene. I always hear women complaining about it. There's no real men. Every, every guy that looks decently attractive is as dumb as a doorknob. And every guy who's, you know, intelligent, he's just like batshit crazy or whatever it is, you know. And I think that's a result because, you know, men have a certain role in society just like women have a certain role. And, you know, men, even though people say men aren't emotional or intuitive, we are. Yes. You know, and when you cross the boundary, you're going to either experience a really bad... Uh, reaction, which I think there's a lot of alpha males that then put women down and they're, you know, they get into that crazy sex stuff. Or the intelligent men are just like, I'm cool, I'm going to go marry a Filipino that doesn't question anything. You know, but that happens, you know. Right, right. But that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, you ousted yourself on so many levels, it's so sad. And the ultimate person who I suffers agree. is the kin. That's who really suffers, Truly. you know. And people don't see this because they think like, oh, women's liberation is such a good thing. It's like, no. First of all, you, you've not liberated yourself, you've enslaved yourself more because now you're a mother and you're going to work. Right, right, <laughs> right. exactly. So. So, yeah, okay, we're going to take a break and pick this up when we come back. Stay tuned, we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the Broad Perspective here on the Broad Perspective Network. I'm Vivian Kamori. Well, I'm Katie Curley Nelson. And we're continuing our visit with Jacob and Joseph Dolashal. And before we took our break, we were talking about we or he mentioned about elders and the role in our society, and I'd like for you to expound on that a little bit, uh, Jake or Joseph, because I think that that's a huge issue. We have we have really anything aging is so not cool. It's so not cool. Well, it, it's so not cool because of the whole like we were talking about a little bit earlier, the industrialization of things. It always promotes things new as being desirable or preferable, where things old are not. You know, when, when in point, in fact, it's exactly the opposite. You know, things that are older, you know, you can get a Cadillac from the 60s is far more um, qualitatively built than a vehicle from the 1990s for the most part, you know. And, you know, and I think it goes into that whole thing where the world is evolving and rapidly moving so fast forward that, you know, uh, you think about, um, you know, how quick everything comes into being in terms of technology or in terms of advancements or anything like that. You know, what, what's, what was relevant five years ago is obsolete today. Now, what I think that does in terms of the psychological subconscious of an individual is it makes, um, you know, it makes uh, the, the older people or the more experienced people look obsolete or relevant because we're always rushing for something new. And if you're old, you're irrelevant because you're not new. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't, you don't stimulate that desirable sense pleasure of something. Wow, this is something unexplored. Even though there comes a wisdom, a sanctity, and also a foundational basis for that that wisdom. And you know, I don't, I don't think it's by accident. I think it's a subconscious. Uh, reaction, you know, because we always want something new, new video game, new clothes, new cars, new sure. whatever. Sure. And so when you see something, you just say, oh, it's undesirable, right. you know. And, and you know, it's, it, it is bad because, like they say, those people who don't know their history are bound to repeat it. And I think we see that problem happening now, you know. It's like, um, you know, I, I remember there was a, it was an interesting quote because, you know, like 9-11 is probably an interesting example on this, you know. Um, it affected everyone's life so much you know in terms of like the laws that we have now the acceptance of cameras on every street corner cameras in your phone and everybody just accepts it but you know when you ask people like when did that happen you know they said like seven out of ten people don't remember what year that happened and it was really? like ten years ago because everything's happening so fast and so mm -hmm. you know it's always so relevant and new and you know i just think that's the danger of it is because you know when you start losing that connection not only to your past but your culture as well um, you know, you move into extremely dangerous territory because it's like that saying, if you don't have, you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything, and you do. You know, how many people today can say, oh, I can resist that because I have principle, because it's like even the parents, they come from a generation that was kind of, uh, it's like hippies, rock music, right. and then they came from like jazz. You see, and it's like, we don't even know how it was 100 years ago. We can speculate that it was more principle-based because it's what we kind of read in books and we assume. Right. But, you know, where will we be in 100 years when all that information, you know, books become obsolete, everything's on the internet now, it could become altered at will. Yes. And you can also, it's, remember, it's not, it's like, it's like what the uh, Carnegie Endowment did. They don't lie about history. They only teach a small percentage of it, which in turn gives you a perception of how it was. See, and that's, that's the key. That's how they can get away with this, because they don't lie about it. Lie they just spin. Right. Mm -hmm. They just right. basically, the truth is maybe a foot like this, and they only teach an inch of it, right. and they don't tell you the rest of it. Right. And so this is how you can deceive people, but not necessarily lie into exactly. deceiving the truth. Well, and see, and that's where, when you get into that very thing, that how do we know that there was such ancient wisdom, and that we, you know, from the elders, because we're just being told what they were being told. Do you see what I'm saying? It's always been a spin. So how is it that it's worse off now than it was then? We don't yeah, really we don't, know we don't that. Know, right. That's what I'm saying. Like, are we really worse off with technology now just because we have this perception of what we've been told by that one right. inch that we've been taught? 
that it's better then than it was now. But we don't really know. That's what I'm, I don't it's, know. That that's it's a shot know. in the dark, and you're absolutely right, because we don't know. You know, unless you're 150 years old and you've experienced this entire time cycle, we really don't know. Um, one thing, though, I, I, I you know, I, I, I would say is that technology, what it does is that it isolates individuals. Mm, and yes. I think that's extremely dangerous yes. because what that does is, you know, if you imagine cows herding together, it takes those cows and puts them into individual bins, which makes them already weaker than they already are. Um, and more susceptible, obviously, to danger influences mm -hmm. and whatnot. And you do, and you see that, you know, people used to have to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And now it's like you can just do everything from behind a computer anonymously, mm -hmm. cowardly, say things that you otherwise wouldn't do. And it also then it affects the person because you think you're something you're really not. You know, and but but back to that whole wisdom thing, you know, I mean, it, it is true. It's like, how do we know what we were even taught if it was accurate? You know, we got the Bible, for example, is an iconic example of that. You know, I mean, the, the version most people are aware of is the 19, uh, the 1611 King James Version. But it's like the Bible has ex existed 1600 years prior to that, you know, is really when its origins in the New Testament at least right. took place. But right. then, of course, you have the 1600 years before that, which is the Old Testament. And it's like, it's went through how many language transitions, and then of course, how many political operations mm -hmm. did it go through to control people? What do we want to tell them? What don't we want to right. tell them? And we exactly. all know that when politics are involved, that's the, the, the greatest <laughs> evil. You know, so it's like, what do we really know? A little bit away yeah. from that ideal situation. And if you're not where you want to be, clearly your knowledge is a little bunk. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really what it comes down to. But I think that's a good point. How do we know it was better 50 years ago or 100 years ago? But, you know, should we say better or should we say were we more capable as human beings? Because, I mean, Joe, from personal experience, when we're out at the Pyramid Center, we know we have to create and make things happen out there without having, like, grocery stores around and all that stuff. And just doing that stuff, as much as a capable person as I think I am, where I can rebuild a car myself, you know, build a home, it's a lot of work being out in the middle of nowhere doing everything for yourself. Just getting water, unless you live by a stream, just getting right. water is difficult. So when you think about just getting water is difficult. Water, you need to exist. And then you think about people today that they drive cars, some can't even make a three-point turn, <laughs> some, some are in front of you and they don't know why they're in front of you, they're in the fast lane, they don't know why. I, you know, the reason I always bring back driving... Road road. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just that. I use... Well, I, did this happen today on our way over? I just use driving like the perfect example of life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. especially in American it's culture. It's the macrocosm of it's the like, microcosm. It's, it's, so it's like it's driving right. is an easy thing, but everybody's ego is in the way. And in this society, we all believe we have rights. And we believe we have the rights because we exist. Not because we earn them, but we exist. Therefore, I will be with my car driving 45 miles an hour in a 65 mile, mile an hour road in the fast lane, not being courteous to anybody else, and that slows life down. You're and right. that's where we're at. We're at today where all these people think we're so smart, so intelligent, mm -hmm. but if you put them out in the woods, dead. Thank and it you. just that's makes you true. think. Thank and it just makes you think. It makes you think like... How did all these people survive through centuries and millennia of existence when today they can't make a three-point turn or they can't park their car or they can't make a lane change without almost killing five people around them? It's like, how do you just, you know what my thing is? It's like, how do you just, your mobility is such an issue and you exist. Mm -hmm. And back then, you know, you had to like fend for yourself everywhere. And it just makes you think like, how is this society even moving forward, how are we surviving if just the simplest of interactions with each other is like brain surgery? It's just, it's crazy. And we think we're so far ahead, which gets me back to why I started talking, is we had to have been better off because we were more capable. Because back then you could survive based on your skill. Today you survive just because mom and dad made a mistake. And then everybody else has to take care of you. You know, and it's not... You, you know, it makes everybody think they're so special. And that's, again, why this society is just driven by ego. Because you think that your existence is your right. And that's not true. Mm -hmm. It is not true. You have to experience and you have to do to build who you are and get everything, you know, to get to that maturity, to get to that potential, to become that elder. And elder doesn't mean you've got to be 80 years old and not walking. It just means you've got to be able to fend for yourself, manage yourself, 
be a human being. Well, maybe it's like, um, you know, on that note, maybe it's like the old ways or like the new ways where it's like a few people governing the majority and it was basically the same thing back then. Because, I mean, even today, most people, you know, when you ask them how an internal combustion engine works or how electricity works or how a cell phone works, they really have very, almost you can go into a room right. of 100 and maybe one or two will know. And then because they didn't even create it, you know, but as like back then, it's like when, if you would have asked somebody how political affairs worked in the 15th century, they would have just stared at you and said, what the hell are you talking about? I don't even know that even exists. And maybe that's on the same idea of that, is that, you know, the, the new world is really the old world just kind of refashioned. Because, yeah, I mean, you know, people probably thought they had rights back then, too. And they must have, because they had revolution. So sure. that, that had to spawn from something, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, I just, it's, it's difficult to say if things change. Or if they're just like a new spin on an old idea. And can it be a spin? And what if it's like, you know, what if it's just the issue, the whole issue is here, what if nothing's being done wrong? What if people just want people to exist and just breathe without actually, you know, achieving that full potential? What if they're the agenda? Or For the energy, yeah. I think that's what it is. I think the majority of people, they just want... Because they, it's like livestock. You don't want a cow to exist because you think cows are cool. It's because you want what you can make exactly. money off of it. You right. want its bones, its hide, its meat. And I think for the quote-unquote elders or leaders of today's world, it's not about, you know, it's not about we care about educating or keeping you healthy. We just want to keep faith in the system alive, and that's what your energy and compliance with the system does for us. When you pay your taxes, you know, when you get a house, when you get right. a car, you know, you're playing into it. You don't know it, but you're playing into that whole system. You're feeding into it, and, you know, you're, you're making that system thrive. And I think that's what it comes down to because, yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of what Jacob said, but also what we talked about earlier is that it's like, uh, you know, the, the government as such or any of these, they don't care about you. It's unreasonable to even assume they care about you, whether you're black and you voted in Obama or you're white and you thought George Bush was the best thing. These people can care less about you. If it killed them, they can care less about you. Mm -hmm. But what they do is they manage human affairs because humans as such, they have an energy that makes the system work. And I kind of made a funny joke on that if we have to wrap it up. Um, I just want to say, because I made a quote about that. I said, if the government spends billions and trillions of dollars controlling you, imagine how powerful you must be. Uh -huh. you know? Because think they do. about that, though. You're they think right. about that because everything from advertising to military to cameras to... To corporations trying to figure out your status so they can invest more, you know, to understand the time, like, energy, and resources. They all of that in to go. I energy. mean, not to us as individuals per se, but you know, we us as individuals make up that bigger whole that their entire existence is dedicated to. And I just think uh, how powerful they know you are, but not you. But they know you are if they spend all that time and energy to manage and control they you. They actually have more uh, invested interest in you than, than you do. do. Yeah, it's it's ironic. I mean, it's a, when you really analyze things from perspectives like this, it's so backwards. Like the, it, it almost seems like like what people consider good is actually evil, and what people consider exactly. evil is actually good. Exactly. You know, it really does when you start reversing things like this. So for all you single ladies out there, Joseph is 6'2", 30 years old. 190 pounds. Makes slim, about athletic build. Very long, luscious hair. He makes about $150,000 a year. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm we kidding. shouldn't say that with... Uh, no. with uh, <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just selling him. Just selling him, yeah. Just selling him. Okay, I get commission. We'll That's have all it all saying. Commercial. That's all I'm saying, a commission. Speaking of commission. commission. Okay, we need to take a break. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. We'll be back in just a moment with more of the Broad Perspective and the Dola Shawls. Stay tuned. You should. Welcome back to the Broad Perspective. Here on the Broad Perspective Network, I'm Vivian Kamori. I'm Katie Curley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jacob. Hello, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> We're getting kind of punchy. It's getting late, I guess. Maybe that's it. But anyway, well, before we took our break, Joe, you were talking about stuff, I forget. So bring us back. You're talking about stuff. About yeah. stuff in yeah. general, yeah. Yeah, yeah, stuff in general. You're going to bring us back. Or close us in Spanish. Back in okay. full circle that maybe the leaders aren't making mistakes. Oh, that's right. right. Thank you. And yeah, just to just to kind of recap where we left off, then um, well, it's exactly what we said. You know, when we consider how much effort and energy they take, um, you know, if you want to loosely call it the government or, or the you know the fascist corporate government syndication that's taking place really today that, that holds our whole system into place. You know how much time, energy, and effort they put into managing us, into making us more efficient in terms of you know giving us cell phones so they can figure out mm -hmm. our exact movements. Of course, they put mm -hmm. that into Thank algorithms you. and what to advertise you, mm -hmm. where you go, how you go, what you do. Um, you know, of course, that goes into a whole huge privacy thing, whether it's actually a good thing or a bad thing. But nonetheless, it comes back to that singular question: Are they really that bad? 
you know, because, you know, I used to say this to people when, you know, we get involved, sometimes we change it into the conspiracy thing and Illuminati and other mm -hmm. trying to kill mm -hmm. us and poison us. And I said, look, these people, they have the technology to kill you. If they wanted you dead, you would be dead. Believe that. You know, right. they're not like you and I where we're going to talk about right. it and we have some yeah. ethical dilemma where maybe mm -hmm. it's bad to kill people. <laughs> they won't hesitate. Right. If you get out of line, mm -hmm. you will die soon. I mean, right. you know, friends, like we were even talking about um, the, the, the cancer researcher, um, it just passed away. Oh, Candace Burke? Candace, uh, it was Candace. And I remember mm -hmm. talking on the phone with her, her and you know, I said, be careful. If you really have a cure for this, be careful. And I remember she laughed and I'm like, no, seriously, be careful. That's, you know, yeah. and you hear this happening all the time. Like Aaron Russo, you know, he gets, he's like healthy and right. he gets cancer. All of a sudden out of nowhere, like, you know, young 34 year old people mm -hmm. that yeah. are healthy, die of natural causes. You know, these things, I'm, I'm sure they perfected nanotechnology because if we know about it Absolutely. now, that means they knew about it 40 years ago. Right. Um, but nonetheless, it, it boils down to that final question. Are they really that bad? And are we just, you know, victims of circumstance? Or are they really here to just manage the human affairs? And is it just like, you know, we're not free, but we have the freedom to move from A and B, and that's going to be our life or our conscious development. And I personally don't think, um, you know, the government is that bad. Because if we really stop, we don't have to be participate in anything. You don't have to have a cell phone. You don't have to have a car. You don't even have to live in this country. Nobody hold you and puts a gun to your head and say, you right. have to do this. This is all voluntary. 100% self-voluntary. You can be here. You can go anywhere you want. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. And that goes for the planet, too. That goes for the planet. And, I mean, mm -hmm. you can take yourself out of existence at any time if you want. You know? I think so, we chose to come here, too. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I think we even did a, a radio interview sometime back where we were talking about that when it was more of a spiritual-based discussion in that sense than we were saying that, you know, I, I personally also believe that I think we decide to come here to be part of a whole, mm -hmm. to play a certain right. role in a part of a whole, but it's also for our personal individual growth. development and growth, exactly. Yeah. And we choose we choose to go into a life because, you know, we could say, okay, circumstance will allow us to experience certain things that we want to experience and it'll help us grow. And it's not, you know, it's again, it's not about this whole love and light thing or being mm -hmm. positive. It's, it's, it's something I think so abstract the mind itself really can't understand it, you know. And that's why I was saying when you see the children in Ethiopia, if they actually chose to come here and live that existence so that they could grow mm -hmm. and they knew that this would be for their own personal benefit, then you can accept it knowing that, okay, who am I to judge that? Who right. am I to judge anybody else's right. lifestyle but knowing that they came here to have this experience? Whether it's good, bad, it's not for me to judge. But is it even bad for them? You know, it, that's what I'm saying. Is because I'm saying. because everybody's standards of good and bad is is you right. know to, you know is, is just because you see them crying on one of those Christian network channels and they're really skinny. It just still boils down to money. It still boils right. down to money. <laughs> yeah. Nineteen ninety-five, no refunds. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah and, and it, it, it's it's a, it's a perspective thing. You know, it really is a perspective thing because who are you to say that their life is good? You know, people in Afghanistan and the whole Middle East for the most part looks as us as economic slaves who are just animals and we're absolutely ungodly and there's you know there's 1.6 billion people in this world that view us like mm -hmm. that are you that well according to their opinion you are right according to ours we're not in this vice versa see so who's right who's accurate nobody really knows it's mm -hmm. a million dollar question but i think in order to find any accuracy or relevance or truth in that is you have to just stop looking at everything outside because that's not you and you have to look within to try to refine that and sublimate your consciousness into a bigger whole, and it goes back to understanding. Because that's how you're manipulated. You're manipulated by your emotions. and right. your, They play off your emotions. And right. I'm patriotic because I live in this country, and then they're going to take your mm -hmm. patriotism and mm -hmm. use it against you to control you to right. move Send you however they want to. War. However they want to use it. However they want to use it. It's just like symbolism. And this is where I go back to the elders. And what were their intentions? We, go, we can go back as far as the earliest symbols of time, and that's what they were using to control the masses. Well, you can put up a certain symbol, you can put up a swastika, right. and mo majority of people will have a certain reaction to that symbol. So where are the good intentions? Where the good but intentions is it, is it, is it necessarily a bad thing, though? Because yeah, maybe when not. we say control, control naturally by default, I think we all have this impression that control is a bad thing. Right. But then, if again, if, they're sin if their intentions were so sinister and... The objective was just to kill us. They would kill us. Right. And we know in today more than but any time they the can do that. Is death the worst thing? Is death even a real thing, though? That's a thing, you know? I mean, and I don't, but see, I don't think it, it's not even that because I really think that the objective is managing human affairs and trying to make, um, control you know. Control the energy. And will control the energy, but I also think it is to try to make a whole out of something because that's what globalization really is on mm -hmm. a large scale. It's <laughs> trying to make many things into one thing, which really started in the 1500s. It's not by any stretch. It's not a new thing at all, you know. Um, or maybe even at the beginning. Maybe it was a very, <laughs> no, maybe it was, because when you read any biblical scripture, that's where all scriptures terminate. 
as they said, you know, we'll all live in peace and harmony and everything mm -hmm. will be perfect. And they always end up with amen. And that's in the Masonic Morals and Dogma Scriptures. That's in the Bible, you know, and that's in pretty much almost everything. As they said that the human race as a whole, when we consider it a unit, is like anything. You know, it's like when they say God, uh, you know, in the beginning there was just one and then God created, which basically insinuates a bifurcation or a duality. Mm -hmm. uh, something happened where an urge created a duality of something that was once whole. And that's like us humans, you know, we have billions of people, but really it's still one whole. Right. You know, even though it's bifurcated or particularized in billion, seven billion or eight billion people. And I think that's that whole, when you look at it from the beginning of time, if you want to say it was, you know, 400 or 4,000 BC, you know, this particular epic, not beginning of time, but the particular <laughs> epic. Uh, 4,000 BC up until, you know, where we're going right now, we're going through certain cycles that are refinements in consciousness in the human race as a whole. And we do that by experience. Sometimes war, sometimes sex, sometimes in money, sometimes reading a book. It, it, you know, it's again, it's an experience. You know, the experience as such is not good or bad. It's an experience so that the consciousness could sublimate and create a whole back in what it once saw as a particular. And it gets you back to the point, would you do anything different as a leader? And then you have to ask yourself, would I really? Because the thing about it is, have you ever had kids? Did you ever want your kid to do something and instead of teaching them it's the right thing to do by education, did you get them to do it and tell them there's a reward? And built them into it? Reward? Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah, hello, I got the t-shirt, the crown, yeah. the center, <laughs> and all that, yeah. Exactly, yeah. and that, that's the biggest question. Is it just like, do you really want to spend all this time and effort into education? Which right. obviously they don't because less and less money goes into education. Mm -hmm. And just get get done what into you want to get done. the formal education yeah. of what we consider education, but when you look at what's gone into technology and the video games and the phones and this, look at the like amount billions of Billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. Right. So is it, they are invested in education. It's just not the education I think that we It's a new world order education. It's, it's a new world order right. education. But again, at the end of the day, it's where you spend your time, your school and everything like that. And it's just not. And I mean, I, I have to find it funny too. Like when I drive by here in this area where the schools are, they look so clean and new visually and when I'm in LA where there's more money than there is here it's like crap holes mm -hmm. and I'm like that just doesn't make sense because obviously there's more people there's more taxes paid right. like think. it just doesn't make sense and maybe that's just the thing maybe the leaders have figured it out and it's not hey let's get these people up to our standards because again at the end of the day it's your duty to get you up to where you right. need to be exactly and the leaders are maybe just doing the right thing but then it gets back to the point is is that, a, is that something that's wrong? Like if you're a leader and you're smart and you have it figured out, is it okay for you to just ignore the idiots or teach them what you know? Is there a responsibility? Yeah, is there a responsibility? Yeah. Well, that's level, right? assuming that they're wrong. And that, that takes us to a whole other place. We're making a judgment that they're, where they are is not, it's not okay. And maybe that's exactly where they need to be. And do we need to control that? But are we the victims? I mean, that's yeah. the thing. The victim we like mentality. to play victims. We definitely yeah, we like do. to play victims. Yeah, sure. I, know, but I think, you know, in terms of that, that particular question, who's right and who's wrong, you know, when we use arbitrary standards, of course, that's mm -hmm. an argument we can have to the end of time. But right. I think, and this is my personal opinion, but I do stand firm on this, I think when you can demonstrate certain things like psychic powers, which is particularly why I showed interest in that genre, demonstrating psychic powers, even though it's not the highest truth, to me, that is indicative absolutely that you are more in tune with the way the universe works and that to me is something favorably to look up to now that doesn't mean you impose your will on somebody it means that hey this is what i can do if you want to be a little bit more refined because life is just better when you're more in tune with the way things are i'll teach you if you don't fine mm -hmm. and i think that's what our what our leaders do do they don't force you to do anything remember nobody ever stuck a gun to your head you voluntarily live here day to day play the role whatever role right. you play true and i think you know, again, and then there's no sinister intention in that, but I think in terms of who's accurate, it's it goes back to something, you know, which we can totally tangent off on and have a whole, you know, whole hour on itself. But it's how attuned is the leaders to the way things actually are. There you, go. you know, and our leaders, as such, you know, if you want to call it the presidents, they're, you know, we all know the presidents don't really decide much. Corporations will decide more via lobbyists on a leader than the people ever will. But see, then you have to say, well, the corporations, clearly the ones that are the biggest in the business are obviously the most favorable to people because the people are the ones who put them there via their profits and buying the merchandise that they sell. Right. So clearly, the voice of the people is through the corporations that then actually put the presidents in power. See, it's not as black, it's not as negative as we think it is. It really isn't. Right. It really isn't. Because how did Apple get so big? Because we all hate Apple? 
I yeah. paid for this phone, <laughs> you know? And then these people have vested interest into politicians <laughs> then to later goad via the politician people into thinking a certain way, which will then right. help them expand, right. Right. you know? But the divisiveness that they ensue definitely helps them control the people, I believe. Absolutely. Whether the Republicans and Democrats, they don't want the divisiveness amongst people. They don't want people to unite. Well, and, and, and it gives people the impression that their opinion means something. Mm -hmm. And it does, but not the way you think it does. Because your vote means probably n close to nothing. But their opinion on, um, you know, like if we're, if we're going to put a product out there and then we have two possible options, do you want the Mac or the iPhone? You know, so there's, so there's some sense of playing a role because if people told you that you have no rights and your opinions don't mean anything, then it could, it would, I think it would inherently create a lot of agitation mm -hmm. and tension and then later chaos and in society. And people would fight. And people would fight. But if you say, hey, listen, your, your opinion means everything. Why don't you tell us what you think about the iPhone? You're like, oh, great. You know, two hours I can express my un unmerited opinion on something that really they don't care about. It just helps. Care. It just, yeah, it just really helps refine your slavery to them, really. Right. Stroke your ego right. so you stay Wait, part of the system. Again. That is brilliant. It helps refine <laughs> your slavery to them. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> And that's all it is, but, but people play into it. Why? Because they're ignorant. But see, again, nobody's forcing anybody into doing anything because, you know, it's like my brother, he knows because he's friends with like, you know, like the people, yeah. a lot of those people that you know, it's like they will kill to express their opinion anywhere they can, whether it's on YouTube or on a survey or on like, God forbid, they get a spot on TV or something like that. They will be adamant to thoroughly express their opinion, which really nobody cares about well, except for... Facebook. We're dying that's that whole to thing, tell right. everybody yeah. every little thing right. that we do right. all of the time. Right. It's because you want to pretend your existence means something. Because you really... <laughs> because, no, but not, not because of me insulting you, but because you yourself don't believe you matter, so you're going to prove mm, to the world you, you matter. And that's what we it touched is. touched on it right there. Oh, you know, that's, very, that's very profound. I have to ponder that. Cause I, I'm on there, but I never... I post Riddle me that. Yeah, no, but that answers a lot of questions for other people that I know that are on there a lot. And Almost everybody under the age of 30? Yeah, and telling <laughs> everything they do oh, no. that day. 60 minutes. Oh, yeah. So. I find a system. You know, you know what it is, again, and a lot of that stuff, why it works so well is because so many people have so many problems, and the only thing they can attach themselves to is their ego. And, you know, people make the ego a bad thing. It can be a good thing if you understand it and how it works. But the problem is is if that's all you have, that's just how you create this world, and you create this puffed-up view of what America is, what we are, what existence is, and we're lost. We're lost, mm -hmm. because we don't know what it is. We, we forgot to look at ourselves, and we started looking at everything at the bigger picture, and all this means something, and there's going to be change, and do you feel the vibrations in yeah, the air, and yeah, all this is change, and nothing, nothing. It's going to be just like it was today, like it was... After uh, Y2K, after it was, you know, after Jesus came or whatever you want to believe, it's always just, life is always going to move on, mm -hmm. you know? It's just going to move on, and it's not going to wait for you. Our only problem is, is we think we're really, really important, but we don't understand why. <laughs> and we probably don't believe we're important, but we want to say it because that's what's creating your existence. You right. don't have the experiences in the world. You know, that's what TV does and all these video games, it makes you believe you have these experiences, but you don't. Mm -hmm. So you just act the way you do. Again, that's why on the internet people are so brave, because you don't have to face anybody one-on-one -on -one and deal with issues. Right. It's all in this reality where you're like eight foot, you know, like this buff, awesome machine that if you say anything, I'll destroy you. When, again, you've lost total concept of who you are in reality. And that gets back to the point. You need to accept yourself. You need to value yourself. And then that's the only way you're going to build the rest of reality. And get clear on who you are and why you do what you do. All that. Yeah. I don't in... think that it li life itself is like that video game, though. Do you know what I mean? Like, we've lost who we are in this experience. Yeah. It's almost like a video game within a video game. It is. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you guys a question after we get off, because I don't want the question recorded. I'll but it's going to be about this. And, and I'll, and and I'll end with this. Okay. Okay. Life is but a dream, and you are nothing but a thought. Life is but a dream. And we'll be with that. We're going to take a break. Yeah, he is single. We'll take a break. 20 minutes later. <laughs> I, I can see my phone's going to be going off. <laughs> we'll be back in just a minute with more of the Broad Perspective and the Dole Shaw Brothers. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Broad Perspective. This is Vivian Kamoy. And this is Katie Curley Nelson. And our voices have changed <laughs> considerably. We've lost it in here. Yeah. So, what are we going to talk about there, Vivian? Well, 
I was thinking of talking about. No, I, you know, I think we got to just finish up this conversation in an interesting way. We were talking about elders, that's where we started, and then we got into talking about leaders and understanding how, how you know, getting an understanding of what their, their role is and are they misleading us or are they not misleading us. And I think I'd like to kind of touch up on the last part with asking Joe what he thinks the role of elders were in the past history of human civilization. Well, I think the, you know, the, the elders, as, as they did even now, but as they did then, is they were basically the, the carriers of um, the human wisdom, and I think they were imbued with a certain responsibility from a spiritual source. You know, you can call it whatever you want, but I think their inspiration was inherently spiritual, and from that source, they have a responsibility to do the best they can to carry the human race towards that, that conscious evolution that we talked about, that kind of that impersonal evolution that we on this particular level don't see because we, we only particularize with a certain reality or a certain aspect of society. Um, but I think, you know, I, don't, I really don't believe that the roles as such have changed. You know, it's like back then we used to have kings, now we call them presidents. You know, we used to have people called servants, and now we just call them citizens. It's like the names change, you know, the clothes change, but the roles as such really don't. You know, because even though we think we have rights, unless you have a lot of money and attorneys, you don't have rights. That's the reality, you know. Um, and, you know, with that said, it goes back to the, the elders thing. I still think, you know, that there is no evil agenda. You know, they're, they're elders that are back then like they are now. It's basically to try to um, keep the, the human race progressing and it's trying to unify everything and have each other see each other for what, you know, as, as one whole as opposed to particularization. And that's really what you can actually see in globalization happening, even though people will always spin it the way they want to spin it. And I think it's even this futile attempt for, you know, this whole like political correct thing. I think their intentions might be good, even though they're causing, in practice, they cause a lot more damage, but I think their intentions are good because it kind of spawns from this idea of understanding it. Unfortunately, the human race needs to go through its own thing. You know, it's like, it's a, you know, I always use that common example. You can't really describe to a five-year-old what sex is because you just have to experience it. And until you experience it, you don't know what it is, period. And that's what the human race we as a whole experience something, as a collective consciousness we experience something, but as individuals we experience something too, and it's kind of all moving forward. And until we come to that point and we don't find respect for ourselves and for other people just for being, because we see ourselves in other people, I think no amount of foistering ideologies is going to help, and I think that's really what the role of the elders that you'll never see, you know, some people want to call them Illuminati, some people want to call them the Bilderbergs, but there's people above those people. Intelligent people are never famous, you don't know about them. Mm -hmm. They are always behind the scenes. They're not the kings. There's somebody who are completely. But that's what I was just gonna say. Who are the yeah. real role models? Even though we have people that are figureheads, are they the role models? Are they the ones that are supposed to be teaching our children, or is it the people within the community? Are they the real role models? Who are the people within that community that can truly be hands-on? Right. Know, Unfortunately, with, with pop culture is the role model of today's mm -hmm. society. Unfortunately.